Welcome back to the Triple T. Here's an update on some improvements we're making on our Foley Bell Saw, Circle Saw Mill. We're going to stretch the bunk out to allow 30 foot on each side of the blade. We're going to probably cut 20 foot boards using this um, mill. We strengthen the bunk by adding supports, welding all over the place. And really the big thing was correcting the misalignment. I'm going to show you what I did there. And we tested the mill on a yellow pine log. Well, one other thing, we uh, right here you see this collar. This holds the blade. And I took it to the machine shop and had it machined. You can see that it just barely touches the blade on the outside of the collar. And that's what you need. Got this plate here. It should strengthen this a little bit for us. Okay, this is looking underneath the bump. We have the hydraulic jack sitting directly underneath the shaft. And so when I pump this up, I'll bring the shaft and the blade. The shaft will go horizontal and the blade should go plumb. I'm gonna call that good right there. All that's left is to tighten these uh, bolts, these grade eight bolts up which are now residing in the little slots that I cut. So greater movement up and down allowed me to plumb up this blade. Okay, what you're looking at here is the PTO where it meets the blade shaft. And right under here is another adjustment. And this sets the blade parallel to the tracks. Or you can think of it also as setting the blade with a slight lead into the log, kind of like a toe, toe is on uh, the front tires of a vehicle. So what I've done is adjusted that right there using these little bolts until I got the same distance from the middle of the track on both sides of the blade using one tooth. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, just like you set, <clears throat> you mark one tooth on a table saw and rotate it around, I'm doing the same thing here. So looking at this, I got four, seven eighths from the center of the track. That's the carriage track right there. I got four and seven eighths. And then I rotate this, this blade <clears throat> back around to the other side and measuring from the center of the track. I got four and seven eighths. You can't see it because the sun's not helping me out today. I had to cut that that loose there, that that right angle piece we welded on there. I guess we did it. Maybe I did it. I had to put my little come along on it. Tie it to a tree. Because I had to scoot it over an inch. That was a lot of fun drilling those holes out. But anyway, when you look down through here, just about got where that string's running down the center of the track. I've already lined up the saw and all that. It's all plumb and straight. This upper rail that guides the carriage is just two one inch pieces of angle iron welded together. Okay, we're almost done. I've got this rail welded all the way down through. It's right underneath this line we popped down through there. So that's just about done. I just need to make sure I grind all the surfaces off smooth that were welded. All I've got left on this side is this strap, this flat strap that runs down through there. Maybe 20 feet of it, 30 feet, no 20. Once we get that done, the top side will be done. 
And then the next thing I'll do is flip this carriage over and put that, flip it over and, and start working on the rollers because I feel like there's going to be some shafts on there worn out. And once I get that done, I probably will hook it all back together, run the cables through the pulleys, and just see how it works. But I'm going to stretch the carriage also. The carriage is going to be, instead of 10 feet, it'll be 20 feet. So it'll give me four headstocks to hold the logs. And uh, it'll also give me four foot between the two carriages so I can cut you know, a short log if I want to. So we had that walnut to cut up and it's pretty short. And then right over here, Mr. Prather welded me a safety cage. That, right there, I don't know if you can see it in the dark. But that'll be bolted down right here and we'll make it where we can move it back and forth. And then I can't get hit by flying debris when I'm whip, uh, milling a log like I used to be. And then the final thing would be the log rack right here to roll the logs over onto the carriage. So we're getting pretty close and it's only been a year, right? It's been about a year. Mm -hmm. So we finished welding the tracks on. We welded the tracks with a string stretched from end to end, lined, it, lined up off the blade. Now I've set up a little um, laser, it's cobalt, and um, it's just a tripod for a camera. It's not really a good system, but can you see the dot? Yes. You can? So if you follow me down through here. See, I'm still right above the track. Kind of a little bit to this side of the dead center right there. Maybe it's maybe a 30 second, and that's right on it again. Let me keep my shadow in there. Still dead center. Dead center. Maybe a little bit to the left. Why did you feel like you needed to stretch out this sawmill in the first place? Well, it, what, it, what it originally was uh, from the factory, it could cut a 14 foot log. So I had to have 14 foot on each side of the blade. Now I've got 30 feet on each side of the blade. It doesn't really mean I'm gonna set, I cut a 30 foot log. I can, but I probably won't because it's not much use for that. But one of the things I get out of it is a shorter log. With this extra carriage I'm gonna put up here and bolt to this one, I'll have a four foot distance between these two knees. One that's gonna be future and this one. So also, that longer carriage makes the, the logs more stable. The main thing is the original bunk and the original bunk was not true to the blade. So basically when the blade was cutting, the lock, um, it was basically pushing against the blade, like in this area right here. Not because of lead, but because of the way it was. It wasn't, this wasn't plumb, and it wasn't squared to the bed. And so when you run a log through it, it would cut it with this quarter inch curve. But when you run a log through it, it would, it would get in a bind. Sometimes it would heat the blade, but most of the time it would just cut it, but not true dimension. Instead of being a square board, it'd be a, like a trapezoid. So that's what I'm trying to fix. Okay. So I just finished welding the rest of this track. So everything's welded. I might put another support in here uh, on each side of the blade. And I'll probably bolt some of these supports down more in this area right here. This is the stress area right here. But you know what? We need to go find the welder and see what he's doing because he's not over here helping me. That stinks.
this is what I wanted to look at right here. See that worn out? I'll either have to replace the bolt or weld up the center of that. Redrill it. This one's okay. It's pretty good. That was real good. This was the worst case when I just took the snap ring off. Little shaft. There's the grease hole. It's got needle bearings in it. I can't believe that. It's really not that bad, I guess. I can live with it. It's never seen grease. Completely dry. I got lucky on this one. I cut a, I believe it's a 5 8 copper fitting and bushed, made it like a bushing for this shaft because this one was really worn out. I guess the, the leading edge here always takes the most force or wear. I wonder how many years it's been since this thing's been greased. Getting ready to try the sawmill since Kim stretched it out. Kim and Weldon actually. He just had a, a log that's been sitting out on the triple T. So we're gonna try it. But the 64 case wouldn't start. So we're using the old Ford that we've had forever. Gonna see if it can run the sawmill. over years since we had this in place. What we're going to do is just function test the sawmill. I'm not going to run it all the way to the end because I don't have the stops in. And we got a old rotten log that <laughs> just happened to be around so we'll, we'll test it with that.
Okay, so that was a function test. It's been over a year since we've had a log on this, I think. And, you know, I haven't sharpened the blade, but mainly what I was doing was just, does it go up and down the track? Remember I set a laser on this side and lined it up all the way front and back. So it did cut, and this is pine. I didn't have any trouble cutting. So really what I'm after now, one thing I put three wraps around the drum that motivates this carriage. I need four. It was slipping. Did you see it stop? Mm -hmm. It was slipping on that cable right there. Those three wraps, it needs four. So um, the next thing we'll do is I'll get more wraps on that and then we'll cut this again. And what I want to find out is, is it the same thickness all the way up and down? And uh, you know, on a short board, you can measure it, but on a long board, you can really just eyeball it and tell. So that's what we're gonna do, but I'm not doing it tonight, because I'm whooped. But this has been a long time coming. It's almost like a mini series. But we're real excited about having our meal back. Changing the points out and the condenser and the coil on that tractor made all the difference. Should have done it a long time ago. It seems to be running better right now than it ever has since I've had it. Here's the, the big moment. This is a, uh, how, big, how big is this? Eight foot log. So an eight foot, what we're checking here is thickness. One inch. One inch. That's what it wasn't doing before. And I hadn't even finished lining it up yet. 
See, I still have to line the saw blade up to the carriage. Now, it should be pretty close to the bunk and the tracks, but I still have to check it. So that would be the next step. So th that's successful. Everything seems to be working good. Uh, even got the old case. You can see it's it's running good. It had no trouble cutting that. I do have a little trouble with the uh, aspirator or something. It's making it hunt a little bit. Anyway, I'm making good progress. You want to go swing? I see you. Ice. Hi. There you go. I see you. You're welcome. Google Maps. <laughs> yeah. Those are maps. Uh -uh. Say bye, guys.